Now, this is going to be, you know, what, what doesn't, you know, or rather who doesn't like an interesting fireside chat. Well, for this, uh, we're going to be inviting on stage and screen uh, Mr. Roland Landers, the CEO of All India Gaming Federation, for a fireside chat with Mr. Manish Agarwal, CEO of Nazara Technologies. Well, uh, we're going to have a great uh, chat uh, and uh, it's going to be amazing to hear the two gentlemen talk about how to uh, make gaming grow in India. Well, if you would like any further questions to go to them, well, this uh, session is scheduled uh, till 4.20 Indian Standard Time. So we'd love, love for it to start uh, at the earliest. But if you do have any questions, uh, please uh, go ahead and tweet uh, with hashtag uh, E4M uh, uh, Game On, uh, a very simple hashtag. And we'd request you to continue with uh, you know being online and uh, interacting with the speakers. So Amanish, uh, before, uh, you know, I, I believe Roland has gone on the other interface and he's uh, maybe joined uh, on the other side, but he's, he's just going to be uh, joining us shortly in the back end. We'd just like to know your opening thoughts before, of course, uh, Roland uh, joins in, uh, since your expertise is so immense. We'd love to know your opening uh, thoughts on the topic today, Manish. All right, so ladies and gentlemen, as you can see on the screen, yes, we do have Manish and uh, Roland joining us. Uh, but we just uh, got your introduction in uh, place uh, and uh, we just request if, you know, in an interest of time, we've hardly got to actually 11 minutes as per schedule. I know that's going to be a little tight on the time, but yeah, we, we'd love to hear from you. And how to make uh, gaming grow in India is a very interesting topic. So, uh, Roland, uh, you know, this is conversations between you and uh, Mr. Agarwal. We'd love to take uh, that forth now. Over to you. Yeah, thanks. Uh... I, Manish, Manish and I have had so many chats, uh, room chats, group chats on this industry, but when, I've never had a fireside chat with him, so that's probably a first. Uh, so, uh, hi Manish, uh, good to do this fire chat, uh, side chat with you again. Thanks, thanks Roland and thanks E4M for doing this for both the friends bringing it together. We have done this as Roland said in boardrooms multiple times, so now we will do it in public. So long time no see, Roland. Yeah, yeah, Manish. Uh, we recently spoke on that uh, uh, as the matter. But on coming to the subject, I think uh, uh, given that the time we have on hand, I also have a hard stop at four thirty. So thanks, Manish, for being here. Thanks, E4M, uh, for putting this together. Uh, so quickly, Manish, we all know the you know the numbers. I'm sure the panelists ahead of us may have spoken about the great uh, growth, etc. That you know the industry has is turning out. Uh, but uh, I wanted to uh, get your view on uh, the challenges, you know, we know they are a plenty, but, you know, maybe if you could highlight some of the challenges that uh, the industry is, uh, is currently facing. Yeah. So, Roland, uh, just to kind of put in context for everybody who's listening and will listen recording is, I mean, we have 500 million gamers and growing and that kind of tribe of gaming is, is really huge and in terms of time spent, in terms of as an entertainment format, this is really kind of dominant and taken over other formats. Uh, the opportunities, as we always say in Nazara, this is a golden decade of gaming for all gaming companies and the gaming market, which is just starting. Uh, I would break down the gaming market into three parts. One is you have a free to play mobile gaming. Yeah. Uh, you have a skill based real money gaming. And then you have Within free, free to play mobile gaming, you have games which are casual, and then you have uh, multiplayer games. So that's part 1A, 1B, and then skill based, and then there is esports. I think com combination of all these three things really make it a very exciting market because of the sheer population size, each of these segments can do off any multiple countries in Europe and anywhere else, and, and we are just starting on that. Uh, so massive, massive amount of opportunity which is in front of us. Now, each of these sectors has some of the other uh, niggles, which if kind of really sorted out, can really kind of put it as a rocket ships. Uh, Skill-based real money gaming, which you and I really chat a lot and we work a lot with industry. If we can have one clear policy about what defines skill gaming, which games are skill gaming, and centrally, nationally, that's one policy. So that nobody can really say that, hey, listen, this, what is a game of skill? Can we really ban that game of skill and state level? If we can get one clear thing that skill gaming is part of center, not state, and then it is a clear definition skill gaming can be played in this. And this is, the, this is the games which form part of skill gaming that will explode this market because investors will come in, people like us will do more capital allocation, 
uh, the uh, the consumer acquisitions will be far more uh, uh, aggressive in nature. So we'll do that. The second thing is the GST clarity, uh, uh, which really kind of really impairs your unit economics, your EBITDAs and PNLs. And this business is a lot of cash cash guzzling business initially, and then you hope that profits will happen after a gestation period. And if your GST clarity is not there, you you kind of don't know what you're operating. So that's the skill gaming play. On the free-to-play multiplayer gaming and esports, I think the key challenge has been infrastructure of internet speeds and capability and stability of internet speeds. Thankfully, after the Geo launch and investment in home fiber by a lot of companies, that has really helped. But we are still on a scale of one to ten, maybe four, compared to our East Asian countries. And as internet quality in terms of speed and stability increases, I think that multiplayer gaming will take off, and along with that, esports will take off. The second part on the esports is we need to really create large scale arenas where people can come, they can really watch people playing, they can really have a feeling of watching a match like in Eden Gardens or or One Kede, uh, and that kind of arenas, if they are done in let's say 20 cities, 40 cities, 60 cities, smart cities, that will really kind of spur a lot of local heroes, zero to hero stories. Uh, and the third piece is on the uh, on the overall gaming is the skilling part. Uh, the gaming needs good designers. Gaming needs a very strong thinking on uh, progression design, concept design, economy design, uh, live operations, uh, strong QA, data analytics. Now, some of these facets are not being taught in our universities, and that can only happen on on the job. And how do we really invite a lot more global companies to set up office in India where our own people can learn on the job? And that will spur many more entrepreneurs and that will really kind of feed more amount of content. I think those are the four or five things I will kind of really define, which as industry, all of us have been really working uh, to really get them sorted. Uh, in spite of that, we are growing. And in spite of that, we'll continue to grow. I think that's the fantastic part of this industry. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Manish. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you know what you said. And uh, recently, uh, some of our uh, you know, geography-based challenges have been uh, elevated, so to say, uh, because of the positive judgments that have come from uh, three in the last eight to nine months, starting with uh, Madras and then Karnataka and Kerala in between. So, you know, that really has given uh, a big boost to uh, some of the legal that you mentioned. The other things, absolutely agree, GST is an issue and, you know, clarity on, on the same is, is uh, required by the industry so that, uh, so that you know, it so that uh, the uh, the tax authorities do look at you know giving a boost to the already growing sunrise sector that is contributing immensely to the to the economy and uh, we really as an industry look forward to that and obviously both of us are working towards towards the same the other challenges uh, absolutely agree and uh, niggles and challenges absolutely agree with what you mentioned uh, about skilling um, as well as you know uh, the arena piece which i'm sure now with the situation normalizing uh, the arenas uh, could be a big draw uh, going forward thanks for that manish uh, i uh, also you know uh, we've seen this entire ecosystem is you know actually on a uh, you know on steroids absolutely starting with uh, pr product uh, guys you know innovating in gaming offerings uh, backed by uh, investors and then you know the platforms themselves putting all those uh, together almost like a platform offering now for for gamers to really come on and you know experience the gaming experience i think uh, that the eco entire ecosystem uh, in accelerated mode um, what are some of the uh, you know emerging trends because see all of this is tech driven you know gaming companies themselves are tech technology service providers enablers uh, and you know there's a lot of development happening and also uh, you rightly mentioned I think with the um, uh, with the opening up of the two G five G spectrum uh, uh, bids in in middle of twenty two, uh, as announced in the budget, also would give a big boost to the uh, to the access side, you know, and and latency and all those issues. But uh, uh, you know, investors, as we as I was uh, reading somewhere, almost a billion and a half uh, US dollars worth of M and A investments coming into the sector right till now. So what do you think, you know, with the technology developments happening parallelly with investors, you know, backing innovative gaming offerings, 
what are some of the trends you see manish uh, you know later this year and you know in the coming maybe next year so i think uh, before i come to the investors and trends uh, roland one of the thing which again is important uh, for us to really kind of work as industry and forum of e4m is about how gaming is good i think we are fundamental thing if you were to kind of look at we come from a very deep seated cultural insight that go out and play is better uh, and if you are on the screen it will make you a lethargic child and you will not be able to kind of really uh, build your stamina you will not be able to build your muscle strength motor skills all that stuff now that is something which i think over pandemic a prime minister also has spoken about now and if you are on the screen it will make you a lethargic yeah so that whole thing about it really helps you in mental stability mental sanity it it e sports is creating athletes athletes are going to commonwealth and asian sports uh how does we create a national e sports championships regional e sports collegiate how can these athletes which require mental strength physical strength dexterity uh all of that become very very important for us to really kind of look at and forums like e4m can really play a very strong role coming with the industry to really propagate gaming is good because what we will do is that this generation of ours will take 5 7 10 years to really kind of educate that these are deep seated habits which we are really fighting these perceptions we are fighting while 30 years later the current generation which is native to gaming they will be the guys who are decision makers and then the evangelizing would be much lesser compared to the job which you and I will have to do today and i think that's one thing which i will really kind of reach out to e4m coming to your question here i think i am personally very excited about the game 5 the web 3.0 right uh for the first time 400 million people in india who are really playing casual gaming or so mid core hardcore games and are buying virtual digital assets in the game will have an opportunity to not just use them for entertainment as a progression in the game or as a winning the game as a competitive game format but they will also be kind of saying that hey listen if i hold the assets if i grind on the assets if i am able to build value for those assets there is a secondary market where that effort which i have done is being appreciated and i can make money out of it the entire play and earn model in a countries like india will really kind of usher in a huge amount of growth flip what we saw 4 5 years back in play to one in skill based real money gaming i think is going to get repeated with obviously a lot of infrastructure in the very early days of onboarding issues and many other issues which needs to get sorted on web 3.0 but all of them will get sorted there is enough and more talent the best of the talent is working the huge amount of in money is coming into that space and that play and earn combined with wash to earn is what is really going to stimulate and accelerate the adoption of that 400 million people which are currently not part of the consumer transaction cash flow they will also come part of that cash flow yeah absolutely and uh, uh, as uh, as the agf uh, you know Uh, the lead federation we are also looking at that space uh, minutely uh, and see you know how these uh, technology uh, led uh, gaming initiatives uh, would you know change uh, as you rightly said you know just how the uh, uh, life cycle of the uh, pay to play rmg uh, unfolded we could see a similar and you know combined with uh, with that i think it's a huge explosion yeah. that is likely to happen but another another thing which i feel is code has a potential of disrupting the indian gaming ecosystem is a cloud gaming where every device whether it's a 5000 rupees device can become a fantastic gaming device and if our 5g is a is a high quality internet we can really provide then entire processing is happening in the cloud and that will give massive flip to multiplayer gaming happening and that will open up a huge amount of adoption today a multiplayer would be around 75 80 million 100 million people that will open up to 300 million people and there is no better experience than playing a multiplayer game 
because every experience is a new experience every experience is a fresh experience and that's where i would believe combination the infrastructure is always the backbone and on top of it whether you do cloud gaming and then web 3.0 kind of play and earn model these two things will further make this uh, the opportunity which is exciting me uh, will will really make it a real one and as i always say uh, there is no other market than india which can offer global game publishers 30 35% 40% cagr for next 5 years and this is the market uh, which they will have to come because other markets are mature and they cannot really satisfy the uh, whether a private equity investor which is invested in them or a public market investor yeah absolutely right manish uh, thanks for that and uh, we are also seeing uh, uh, you know while this is a great marketplace uh, with the numbers uh, contributing you know immensely from the adoption by a newer set of gamers as well adding to this existing 400 million uh, tech tech enabled of course you know uh, driving that number further up to probably 500 million by 2025 so uh, exciting space and uh, you know as as you also articulated well backed by technology and uh, you know the investor communities uh, we are seeing also uh, india out i mean you know uh, while a lot of the game development and you know this best better than others how uh, you know teams are collaborating with international some of them have set up studios also here to develop uh, some uh, you know highly immersive games uh that is already happening in the game development side and we are also seeing that you know uh, some of the gaming companies also looking at uh, going you know international india out so to say uh, what is your you know uh, view on, on that uh, while a lot of the investor uh, and also international companies on the skill side and some of these web 3.0 will be looking at india as a you know as a potential market we are also so seeing India. So, if you look at any market, uh, Roland, uh, the gaming entrepreneurs come in with the backing of gaming entrepreneurs. Yeah. So, successful gaming companies which have seen exits or which have seen value creation, they become the anchor for their employees or the rest of the ecosystem to really become gaming entrepreneurs. And this is what we have seen historically in any market. And the latest example being Turkey, a small country. with peak games in 2017 18 really getting an exit and then it has spawned off so many successful gaming companies today and i believe that in india with nazara's ipo with play simple moonfrog and some of the large skill based real money gaming companies giving esops buyback that is going to spur massive amount of entrepreneurial activity in gaming with high quality talent really coming out second part is the when investors start seeing exits they get excited to invest in the segment uh, earlier there were no exits and hence they were skeptical that we'll get stuck now that they are seeing exits whether the multiple rounds and exits happening or it is about exits happening through an ipo or strategic sell uh, i think the entire investment is going to really increase in this segment and that's what we have already seen about it and in investment is no longer getting concentrated in top 3 4 players it is getting more broad based and that's where i am very excited about the entrepreneurs coming out in india whether they are making in india for india or they making in india for globe i think that is a function of their own estimation and understanding of where the market and what kind of game they are making but the high quality game development over next 2 3 years i am very very confident that what has happened in turkey in next 5 years will happen in india a massive amount of game studios being lapped up by local gaming companies and the global gaming companies yeah thanks manish and uh, yeah i mean uh, just uh, as we do every year you know the numbers for the city frames report uh, which ey compiles uh, you know name number of game development companies gaming platforms itself you know the startups all are uh extremely high i mean 300 plus 400 plus so so things are really looking up and as you rightly said you know with all of these uh, if india can go the way to keep goes as you envisage i think uh, you know exciting times for our industry and uh, i really look forward to you know working along with you uh, for the benefit of the uh, 
I think I think one of the area where we are lacking is participation and excitement or the aggression or stroke conviction, whatever you call it, of brands in and in, in spending on gaming. Uh, we have seen consumer spending increasing. We have spent, seen uh, the the consumer uh, the uh, uh, IAP increasing consumer behavior in a, in a non skill money gaming. But we have frankly not seen the the uh, the participation of the advertisers with the gaming companies and seeing what can be really done and what can be created to build communities uh, around game around a context of gaming. I think that is where. Uh, there is still a quite a lag, and given that we are on this forum again, where a lot of E four M touch points really happen with the with the advertising industry, I think that's something which I would urge again the guys who are listening and E four M to figure out what could be done, because it's an amazing sticky community which happens, and esports is a great example of that. Uh, but how do we really kind of build a long uh, communities of yours with the context of gaming? Has not been seen in action here yet. Good, you brought that up, Manish. I'm sure the forum guys can, you know, look at it. Yeah, just like uh, for brands who are targeting, you know, this uh, difficult to reach young audiences, as Manish said. I think uh, you know, uh, free to play gaming and other gaming uh, platforms and avenues that can be used to to market brands. Uh, thank you, Manish. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for for the time, and you know, I enjoyed uh, as always speaking with you. Thanks, E4M, and uh, yeah, if there are any questions, you can uh, you know pose them too, and we'll be happy to answer. Thanks, thank you uh, once again. Right. Bye. Bye. Bye.